So I was living on the street and my conversations with my mom were very short. Uh, I would hang up on her almost immediately when she asked me to seek treatment. But after working with Andrea, um, she was able to develop more of a relationship with me. And even though I was under the influence and even though I was deep in a manic episode, um, those little conversations and her really trying to just connect with me and not just have me go to treatment really really changed things and made me want to trust her again.
genetics. So yeah, definitely. There's genetics. Genetic uh, genetics can play a huge part in the addiction <coughs> environment. So we know that both uh, nature and nurture play a part in addiction, and then environments such as trauma. Um, these sorts of issues can can create addiction in families as well. I talked about addiction as a family disease also because it impacts the whole family. And I say, who has not been impacted by the POC's addiction? <clears throat> and um, you know, no, you know, no one's gonna raise their hand, right? Or who has been impacted by the so-and-so's addiction? Oh yeah, and everyone's hand goes up and and you can have a discussion in what ways have you been has has that impacted you and you uh, can even yes i i have experienced um that the father is in denial of how that his wife even had an addiction until covid hit and that but the kids remember her drinking from the time they were very young and being totally passed out you know the dad has no recollection of that he says and a lot of it is because he's a workaholic right mm -hmm. and he's never home was never home so yeah. but you know so but i can i can hear him saying that she, it never affected me you know <laughs> so i don't know how to respond to that well i would and and I always, I really don't want to get in power struggles with anybody. And I'd say, wow, that's, that's, that's really good. Um, and so here's, <clears throat> here's what I call my Columbo approach. Uh -huh. you know, do you ever watch, has anyone ever watched Columbo? Love him. Yeah. <laughs> and he kind of like does this, this kind of like, it's kind of like he, he's oblivious to certain things and he's, oh, well, I didn't realize that. And I kind of, I mean, that's kind of his demeanor. Um, and then at the end, you know, he kind of wraps it all up together very expertly. But I, I, I kind of, I, I would go, oh, wow, that's really, that's really um, amazing that you weren't affected by that. So you never like stayed up at night kind of worrying about your wife's drinking. You never were concerned if she drank and drove. Um, there were, you, you never had any safety concerns. That's really that's pretty amazing that, 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 that the disease didn't impact you in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it somehow your wife, you know, paid for her use without it impacting your finances. That's, you know, it sounds like that was, that was in a lot of ways you were oblivious. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? I'm totally agreeing with him and pointing out, you know, ways that it didn't impact him when it probably did. <laughs> you know. So finding so those just, bottles yeah. in the back of the couch behind the pillows ever bothered you? That never. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing that you were so loving and kind and forgiving that when you found that empty bottle in the couch, it, it you just. Yeah, you just went, went back went to work. It. Yeah, you did. You didn't worry. That's that's amazing that you were in such a sound mind that you didn't worry about about all these empties or, or whatever it is, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. it's, he's likely to push back. Yeah, he will. He's likely to say, oh, no, man. Oh, no, I used to stay up at night. I used to, I was very worried. Oh, uh -huh. so you were impacted. So this is another way that addiction is a family disease. Mm -hmm. It impacts everybody. The other way is... You know how we the, how we interact with each other influences us greatly, and we think of a family as a system. We think of family as a solar system, or, or as a system. So think of the planets. Think of the the solar system here. Think if we moved Jupiter, you know, two hundred million miles closer to the sun, and then we took Mercury and moved it three hundred million miles away from the sun. Is that going to impact the orbital patterns of the other planets? Mm -hmm. And most people say, oh, yeah, yeah. And you can even do an exercise where um, you get a long rope and you get everybody to stand in a circle. And 
you kind of weave the rope back and forth within each other or a string or something like that. And you have, so it's just one, one continuous thread and you have people hold it loosely, like through the, through a hole in their fingers. And you say, okay, I'm going to move one person this way. And I'm going to move one person this way. What happens with all of you? When, when this person steps away from the family, do you feel the tension that creates? And you guys tend to have to, you have to step forward to compensate for this. Mm. So this is actually an experiential exercise you can do mm -hmm. to show that, you know, and you can just, you can get like some, uh, you know, you don't need rope even. You can get some, uh, something, big, I mean, yarn, yeah. yarn or some sort of, of, of a twine type of cordage. And you can do this. And as you pull someone away, some, you know, so-and-so is drinking. And when they drink, they tend to isolate and withdraw. So they pull away. What happens with the string? Where's the tension? What do you have to do to compensate? You guys come together. And then you can even do the um, changing the perspective exercise, you know, where you have the circle in the middle and all the circles around. And the old model is, do you know that, that are we, do you know what I'm talking about? I kind of vaguely remember it from our training, but could you remind us? Like that Venn diagram? Let me see here. I might have something ready for you. <clears throat> I found an app on online that does genograms too. Um, the, that I was shocked to, to discover. Does anyone else have any recommendations for something like that? Um, I, I, I'm i just curious because um, like a lot of the families I work with are across the country and I would be potentially doing this on Zoom. What app did you find? I will tell you in one second. It's I don't like the apps and, and I, I, you know, everyone use their own thing, but I, I find that the, um, the power is the interacting and drawing it on the board or the paper and the talking, the discussion, and the app seems to, um, it's it's actually a drawing y utility um, that you do create the genogram on. It just has the squares with the all of the symbols that you can okay. pull off of the side of the of the app and and pull on to the the graph paper. It's called um, Wonder. Wait, let me tell you. It's called Wondershare. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I don't mean to take up. Okay, it's called. Wondershare e draw and there's a there's a tutorial on it on youtube okay that might that might be that's I'll, something different then i'll put it in the chat the yeah okay so here's shifting the family perspective you draw this and you say this is the traditional way we look at addiction the poc is in the middle everyone's all concerned about what the poc is doing and Part of this is this, the addiction creates connection in, in, in a family. Sometimes families are disconnected and someone has an addiction and suddenly everyone's talking about Bob. Did Bob drink today? Is Bob sober? Um, did you know Bob went to jail? Bob got fired from his job. Is, is Bob's wife going to leave him? It's all Bob, Bob, Bob. But this creates a lot of connection with everybody. But what we're really trying to do is get the P, bring the POC out and focus on the addiction because the POC actually has the most information about what's going on and probably has a really good idea about what's going to work and what's not. Mm. Um, and, and so really we need to bring the addiction out or the POC out and have him join, have him or her join in looking at the addiction and how not only the addiction is affecting him, but the whole family. Right. And how can we get access to these, um, 
images? I think this comes from the training. Um, do you do you not have this? Um, we, we did it virtually, um, a couple of us, and yeah. they didn't give us any kind of like paper copies, yeah. and they didn't give us like a lot of downloads. I can probably just email this to the Wednesday list if if that works. That would be so helpful. <laughs> Thank I, you. I I draw this. I draw this yeah. with people. And I put their names in it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, so I love that. That might be. And what helpful, is? Go ahead. It's still good to have this. Yeah. It's still good to have this. What's the um, question mark in the middle? What does that represent? Okay, so so the idea here is when it when we all band together, and the addiction no longer becomes a concern, the addiction is in remission. Mm, okay. Then we got to look at now what what needs to what needs to be addressed here well the addiction's gone but there's some unresolved grief there's mm. some illness there's some whatever and I, and i'll actually use things from the genogram mm. there's you know the this divorce you know um grandpa you know sexual abuse of of these kids and and you know this business went bankrupt and everyone lost their money and you know any sorts of trauma we they move people moved from here to here you know and it created a lot of dis disconnection these are issues that we haven't addressed as a family mm -hmm. and and what's happened is the addiction has um distracted us mm. from these issues because it's much more important but now that the addiction's gone if we don't address these issues then then the addiction could slide back in right. and to, to 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 keep us connected and also because the, the pain from the unresolved grief and everything else is so much Okay, so um, I have another question. Um, so the father, you know, when I was talking about looking at family history and, tra and generational trauma, he was like, well, we don't have that. And yet his parents divorced when he was two years old and his mom was a professor and dra dragged him all over the world when she taught at different universities. And so he doesn't identify any of that as trauma. How can we help him with that? Is it sort of like what we did before? I, I, I would just say, I, I, I would probably, um, I would probably give that to the family. Like if he's like, well, hello, all. Well, I wouldn't call that trauma. Right. In this video, we'll learn about. Sorry, that. sorry, sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I clicked on the link. Oh. <laughs> And then I couldn't um, try my mute button. <laughs> no worries. That's fine. I I would probably say. So I uh, what I'm hearing is, on the on the genogram we've identified these certain things, and um, for certain people it could be traumatic. You're saying no. I'm wondering what your family thinks. Oh oh. <laughs> hey, ha hey family, do you think that the, these things have impacted your dad? In what wow. ways do you see it impacting your dad? What? Well, dad never talks about it. Dad's not, not emotional. Dad's a workaholic. Okay. Oh, my God. I want to cry just hearing you say that because it really is, I don't know what, it just touches my heart and probably will touch all of theirs too. <laughs> yeah. And that's the power is we're not, we're not going, oh, yes, it has. Can't you see you're a workaholic? You're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you're right. What, what does the family think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what 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 do you see? There are there. You're not drinking. Are there any other addictive patterns that you have? Mm -hmm. if, kids, what 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 do you think? Is there any addictive patterns in your dad? Oh man, he's a workaholic. Yeah. Right. So that's how we work. The the use the power of the family to i mean this is why the the intervention the the arise model is about working with the family together i mean imagine if we just were addressing the wife and her drinking and no one was 
looking at all at dad and and the pain that he's carrying. Well, what's interesting is that the identified patient is the son who just had a major. Oh yeah. And okay. so, so, but when I was talking to him about generational drinking or issues, he said, well, my wife's drinking was, was just because she was fe- feeling isolated during COVID. Although, like I said, the kids identified going back to their childhood, but my son is just because he feels awkward in, in social situations. And I'm like, oh my God, is that why he's doing crystal meth and cocaine too? You know, I mean, I didn't say that, but, but, you yeah, know, yeah. but, but how do I, you know, like, how do I draw that connection for him? I'm not sure. I'm, sh- I mean, I'm sure I could pull a few things out of my hat, but I was just, curious. yeah, I think, I mean, th- this sounds like a hard guy. And I think part of this is really just kind of like this family's in a lot of pain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of pain here and we've all, you've all responded to it in different ways. Mm hmm. And what we really need to do is, you know, figure out how to address what's happening and get into a healthier place and then figure out how do we resolve the pain that you all have experienced for so long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do is, 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 is is to kind of what, what, what's reconnect the transitional pathway past present to future they're stuck in the past there and the pain has has kept people stuck from moving forward Mm -hmm. and these dysfunctional patterns whether it's relationship workaholic um substance abuse it it keeps people stuck in it and it also distracts from the family pain Mm mm-hmm Okay. So Great. that's just kind of what I would do is is just you know kind of like well maybe that's not the case you know maybe maybe it hasn't impacted you or maybe yeah maybe maybe your your wife was just lonely or maybe your son is socially awkward but I don't know maybe there's something else mm-hmm. maybe maybe there's some deeper pain here and I I mean I would even if the son was there I'd like so is there is some other stuff going on here besides the, your social awkwardness what what's going on here right mm-hmm. and i talked to the, the wife is there other stuff b- besides the isolation your kids are saying that this drinking's been going on for a while mm-hmm. can you help us understand right mm-hmm. yeah and, and and i i continually acknowledge like there must be a hurt there or something mm-hmm. yeah Mm-hmm. And I don't argue, I don't fight, I don't, I just roll with it because, you know, sometimes things take some time to come out. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like, you know, a month or so in and, you know, you're right. The loss of my father was huge. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, so. beautiful work. Thank you. Yeah. Is any questions about this? I love doing this because you you're working with the family. I'm not up there. Listen to me and I know everything. I'm just asking questions. Yeah. And I'm like, I talk about the difference between as a therapist, I'm really more focused on the content as an interventionist, I'm way, way more focused on the process, uh-huh. what's happening in the room. And I call that out a lot. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, in this case, I'd like, yeah, dad, there's a lot of, you have a lot of doubts. This is really, you, you don't agree with this. Um, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I see like your kids are, you know, you kids, you see it a little bit differently. So I'm I'm just describing what is happening in the room. And that in itself can be teaching and it also generates discussion. Yeah. That people start talking about, yeah, there is a problem. Yeah. Dad, you are a workaholic. Yeah. That that starts to come out. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Very good. 
ask a lot of questions, make observations, ask questions, especially ask stupid questions. Uh huh. It's 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 it. You know. Um, oh, that's wonderful. So all you need to do is go to AA, and you're going to get sober. That's awesome. Has ha, ha, how many times has that worked before? Well, it worked for his wife. He calls her a miracle, and and um, yeah, she she just yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. All you need to do is go to AA, and that's wonderful. You didn't you didn't need a treatment. So so you really needed didn't really need to address deeper issues. Mm-hmm. There really aren't there. It really isn't like an underlying pain that, that was part of your your use. That's okay. Uh huh. So, do you see how stupid that question is? Mm-hmm. And most likely, people are going like, "Well, I don't know about that." So I have another question now that you we're going there, and I'm sorry I don't want to take up everybody's time, but I think this might be useful to all of us. But like the daughter that's like the like shining the light on the darkness in this family right like she freaking sees it and will not shut up and she's so but they refer to her as um like um like who do they they call her they label her all these names like histrionics and you know all of these things and yet she's the one who helped the mom you know finally get sober because she drew boundaries so hard but, you know, they all say that she's histrionic and she's attacking and she's all of these things. And I'm afraid that when she's... And the dad even said to me, how are you going to control my daughter in the family meeting? What are your thoughts on that? Because she is very loud. And, I, and I've already talked with her a lot about that wounded child and her protector part that has to be heard and seen and acknowledged. And I fucking get it. But in the family meeting, I ha- there has to be a way that she doesn't become the center of attention and re- and distracts from the work, right? So, ground rules. And then, again, going back to the process. Oh, hey, daughter, I noticed that you're really s- kind of speaking really loud and energetically. You know, I notice that's happening. How are people, you know, how, how is this, how are other people, how are you as a family, you know, or, hey, dad, how, what, what's happening with you when your daughter gets big and loud like that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, daughter, do you feel like, you, you know, what's going on? Why are you getting so big and loud? Yeah. Are you feeling like you may, you're not being heard? Mm-hmm. So... Again, you're making observations, you're asking questions. Okay. How is this impacting other people? Mm-hmm. Do do can other people hear her without her having to get loud? Okay. That's really good. So process, process, process. What's happening in the room? Ask questions. What's going on? Why is this happening? How's it impacted you? How do we want to do it differently? Will you guys listen? She says she's not heard. So can you guys listen if she gets quiet? Oh, that's beautiful. So just, yeah, you, you're you're just asking questions, and on what they're telling you, you're negotiating and navigating this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I'm seeing here is X Y Z. Hmm. I noticed that I'm really noticing when. You get really loud. You get really quiet and withdrawn. You you almost look scared to me. What's going on with you? And they've said the, that that mom gets scared of her. Yeah, and so does the brother. Yeah. So I'm noticing things. Oh gosh, what I'm seeing is what I really noticed that when this happened, you did this. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about that? Hmm. Okay. And again, I'm not getting into the feelings. I'm not like, oh, are you feeling scared? Are you... I'm just bringing stuff out for them to talk about to try to change some dynamics. Okay. Right. And what happens when she says, I'll talk as loud as I want and no one's going to stop me? 
Well, I, I would say something like, well, one, we've got some ground rules here and I don't, when, when things get aggressive, when communication gets aggressive, it gets shut down. And I really want you to feel heard. And number two, like, Hey, Hey family, are you able to listen to her better when she's really loud or when she's talking in a normal voice? Mm -hmm. And then they can give her that feedback. Okay. And then if she continues, if she's like, well, I'm going to talk loud anyway. Well, that that's your choice, but I'm going to like, if it gets loud, I'm going to ask you to say it softer because that's the ground rules. Okay. So where do I find the ground rules? Do we have those somewhere? Cause this is all new to me. That's all in the, um, Arise pamphlet. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the handbook. Okay. It's in the it's handbook. You through the steps of like conducting the first yeah. meeting. Yeah, I don't have that book yet. No, I, you have to down. You have to download it. It came in your first email when you signed on to oh. the program and paid for it. Okay. You'll see it. Yeah. Thank you. It's thank in the you. downloads. Okay. Thank you so yeah. much. I'm so yeah. excited. Mandated, you, you clarify mandated reporting responsibilities, set ground rules for first meeting safety, ensuring, ensure safety, no violence, no nasty comments, mm. use non-blaming I statements, get verbal commitments for ground rules from each member. Oh, good. Identify and commit escorts. So get your spiel down. I, <laughs> I always talk about communication. So What's really important is that we're able to talk and communicate. And I want to, my goal for this meeting is to keep this, to keep communication open. I know that if people feel attacked, if people feel threatened, communication shuts down. So I'm going to encourage you to use I statements. I'm, I want to encourage you to talk about things from your point of view. I don't want any blaming and shaming going around at no pointing fingers. If that happens, I'm going to be asking you to say, to repeat what you say in a way that can be heard. Okay. Because I know, again, when people start getting blamed and attacked, communication shuts down, listening stops. Love that. So can you agree to do that? Bob, Bill, Sue, Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. And then also you're recording this. Is there a place where we can find the recordings? Oh, you mean this, this thing? Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I can, how do I do that? I, I could probably send it out after we're done or something. We could do something like that, yeah. but just get your spill down, get your spill down. Mm -hmm. However you want to say it. I use it in the context of safety and open communication. Got it. And that's what the ground rules are about. Okay, great. Thank you. you know, You've been shut in. off your phones if you can. I know some of you have might have kids at home and other responsibilities. And so I get it if you need to leave your phone on. But if you can, shut it off. Bathrooms are over here. Mm -hmm. Things sometimes get emotional. If we need to get if we if we feel like we we're too emotional, and we need to get grounded. It's OK to take a minute and take a break. Take five, ten minutes, walk around, get your uh, escort with you. And what does the rest of the family do while they're taking the break? Whatever they want. They, they can take a break too. They can take a bathroom break or whatever. Okay. Um, I don't want them talking while the other person's out. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't, we're not going to talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I might, I might check in, Hey, is everyone doing okay? You know, you are, you're all okay. And if they start talking about the person, uh, let's not go there. I don't want to, I don't, I want to.